Hello, motherfuckers. What's happening, hell raisers and harlots? Hey there, all my bad bitches and unproblematic niggas up, down, and all around the internet. It is I, the one, the only, Kimber Shan. Don't call me Kim, ho. It's okay to be extra because I tell it like it is. And welcome to A Quickie with Kimber Shan, the show where I give you the facts, foolery, the fuck-ups, tell you something, and give you some inspiration all in 20 minutes. Well, wait, today is going to be longer than 20 minutes. But welcome. So before we jump right in, I want to introduce a very special guest joining us today, the creator of the infamous blog, Black Girls Are Easy, now known as Far From Basic, author of the essential guidebook to finessing whole tactics, along with solving single and men don't love women like you, along with many other books. He has worked on many film projects and is an ex expert at helping bitches get their life together so and also a dear friend of mine gl lambert yeah, that was good you did it you know we got to start over from the top because you stumbled a little no that was perfect I was thank say. you for having me on your show <laughs> am i your uh your first yes you're my first guest <laughs> what an honor how are you doing today i'm feeling good i'm feeling good you know what la traffic had me down but your face has me up so i'm ready to rock and roll okay we love to hear it well, I'm so happy that you're here. And, you know, when I bring a guest along, I really want to bring you into my world. So you'll be going on this ride through a quickie, okay? So let's get to facts, foolery, and fuck-ups. So when I was on the internet trying to find stories, there really wasn't shit going on that I haven't already talked about. So I just thought let's just pull some random shit out. That's How it. do you feel about Sexy Red? Pound Town? Yes. I see a lot of people online saying she's so ghetto why she do this why she do that but she's doing nothing but being herself i think she's doing a great job of teaching the youth what they need to know like your booty hole is brown your pussy pink <laughs> it's like you know when i was young you've learned that the sky is blue water is wet like what about the asshole <laughs> how do i supposed to know how my own asshole looks unless sexy i mean tell me? yeah if you're she's telling the truth your pussy pink and your booty hole brown so if it's not something is terribly wrong so I think that she is just doing what she do. I mean, niggas are showing you who they are. Niggas be walking around with 12 baby mamas. Why can't she just be a ghetto bitch from St. Louis? What's wrong with that? I love her uh, gonorrhea story. Did you hear that one? No. What is that? Her and her uh, baby father took a brick, right? And so <laughs> she's like, they know they're still fucking with each other, fucking other people. And so they got back together. And she's like, they're having sex. I'm like, what's that smell? <gasps> He's like, I was afraid to ask you. Oh, no. And she's like, you know, they both went and got checked. They both had gonorrhea. And she he was like, I only fuck with one other person. And she's like, yeah, I only fuck with one other person. He's like, mm -mm. so you need to tell your person. He's like, you need to tell your person. And the interviewer is like, well, who gave it to y'all? She's like, I blame it on him, but I know my other baby daddy gave it to me. My other ex gave it to me, but I didn't want to tell him that. I was like, what the fuck? So, you oh, know she no. So this was like in an interview with mm -hmm. him. Oh, my goodness. Jeez. That's raggedy. But, I mean, shit, that shit happens. If you fucking, shit happens. So. And, I, you know, it's it's funny. People criticize, especially female rap. But at the end of the day, it's like, there's genres of rap for everybody. If you want Lady London MC or you want Poppy Nicki Minaj or you want fucking just hood ratchet sexy red, do you? I mean, we've grown up with fucking everything from ODB to fucking the Jizza to... All kinds of stuff in between where it's like, this is silly, this is more serious. Why can't female rap be the same thing? Yeah, there's it's a space. Yeah, there's a space for everybody. Like, I love Sexy Red, one, because she's hilarious, but also because she doesn't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Think about so many people in the industry that give a fuck about everything. I genuinely feel like she doesn't give not one fuck about the things people are saying about her, especially she's getting money, so... I support her, and I grew up with a lot of bitches like her. So it's real. It's yeah. like you see her, like I know someone like that, or I know multiple people like that. So I think I know that's a lot of bitches like, like that. Oh, this <laughs> first you watch it, like what the fuck is them? Like okay, this is funny. Okay, let me listen to the next song. Let me listen to the next <laughs> song. But that shit catchy too. <laughs> town, town, just left town. I love and what's shit. the new one? Ski. That oh, shit is catchy. I like that one. I actually one. wrote that into a, um, I was working on this screenplay and I was like, oh, I need something for the, the uh, person to yell. Like when he came into the room, I was like, I should put ski. ski. I'm like, that's too much. I had to take it. I was like, that's too much. It's too, hey, that, hey, that would have caught them and grabbed them and nah, brought nah, them in. 
Okay, so we both agree that Sexy Red is it right now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so something else I've seen people talking about is fucking Elon fucking up Twitter and Twitter now being called X. X. Yes, what what the fuck is up with that? Elon's doing way too much coke right now. He doesn't get (laughs) enough sleep and he probably doesn't drink enough water. I I blame it all on that. He's a smart guy. He's a, a good Businessman, the same sense like Mark Cuban is, but Mark Cuban knows his fucking lane is like, okay, I'm gonna mm-hmm. sit in the background, buy other people's shit, and then make money and sell it. Where Elon wants to like be out in front of everything, and it's like he could have um, bought Twitter, made some changes, put somebody else's the, the face of it, yeah, and stayed in the background, did all this crazy shit, and it would all the heat would have been on whatever new CEO he hired, even though that he's just a puppet master. But his ego was out of control. It's, yeah, he wants to be the center of everything. Did you see he, how he stole the, the tweet? Yes. I'm like, dude, it's your platform that you already warned people about stealing people's tweets and you're going to steal this guy's <laughs> fucking Oppenheimer tweet. It's like, come on now. And what's up with his beef with um, Zuckerberg? Like, is that real or is it just some like uh, internet bullshit? I think it's white boy uh, fake because white the billionaires day, doing it. <laughs> when they go to the same fucking luncheons and charity events, you know, they're going to hug. Oh, that's fucking dreads. You son of a bitch. Oh, you know, I had to get you. But then the day it's like, <laughs> They're all donating money to the same causes, all going to the same things, all having backdoor meetings about the same shit because they're all in it together. At the end of the day, like, if Facebook's going to make money or Meta's going to make money, if Twitter's going to make money, they got to work together. So it's it's all fucking smoke and mirrors. (laughs) It's for people to talk about and and pick sides because it's fucking, that's what people do. You divide people and pick sides and you all, you you make money off of both sides. That's what it is. Yeah, and people can pick and choose which one they want. If you want to go on Twitter, if you want to go on Threads. How you liking Threads, by the way? It's the same shit. I mean, it is the exact copy and paste of an app. It's the same shit. It's like, I, you're like, something new. Let me get on. Let me use it. And at first, it was like, cool, because everybody was trying to like, uh, what's the word? They're trying to um, interact with their fan base. Usually, like, on Instagram, you post a caption, whatever. It's in the air. Twitter, you post what you got to post. No one really talks to anybody. It's like the peasants in your comments. So oh, Doja Cat, oh, this and that. But on threads, everybody's like, oh, what do you guys think about this or this and that? And even Zuckerberg, hey, guys, what do you think I should eat tonight? It's like they're trying to be more interactive. And, you know, that was like the thing, like, hey, get on here and actually talk to people. But they're not yeah. responding to these motherfuckers. They're like, <laughs> we just want you to get our numbers up because we want more followers so we can sell you shit. Facts, because the day I see an ad on there, that's when you know it's oh, all over. Oh, the update over. came yesterday. Oh, they hey, have ads. We got I new been features that you that you've been asking for. I was like, I didn't ask for shit. We did not ask, <laughs> I didn't even ask for, for this you. App. <laughs> right, we did not ask you to try to sell us a black ass thing. <laughs> so okay, so that's pretty much all for facts, foolery, and fuck ups because y'all ain't doing. You know, ain't nothing going on when the shade you, room start. What posting. do you think about the um pinky doll? Oh, NPC. the NPC bitch. Gang gang. I went down a rabbit hole. I think I talked about this last episode. I went down a rabbit hole of NPC characters and I started doing it in the mirror because I thought it was. Let me hear, funny. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Mmm. Ice cream's so good. You wouldn't really give it to me for real. <laughs> let me hear if let me hear your real NPC voice. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Kimber. <laughs> Ice cream. Yum. Ooh, glizzy. <laughs> You wouldn't work. You would make five dollars. You just fuck it all up. The, it's not for me. The Acting a damn of, fool. The genius of Pinky Doll is that like she can have that character. She only breaks when that kid comes in the room and doing starts bad. cussing him out. And like, yeah. And, and French is like, but it takes skill. Cause I heard other girls do it and like it's not it's not given the same. When like, I went on TikTok probably like three days ago, every single video on live was people doing it. Like, it's becoming a thing. Niggas do it. Oh, I can't imagine. I seen this Asian guy doing it. It was, <laughs> everybody's doing it because they're thinking about, oh, I can make money. But she be on that shit, doing that shit for five, six hours straight. Like, she's committed. Mm-hmm. I was on the thing. It's like, um, I thought it was an old video. It's like, she's live right now. I'm like, oh, shit. And she's there. And, like, you can tell it's starting to weigh on her because, like, She's tired. You can hear in her voice mm. like, oh, thank you, honey. Oh. Right like a cowgirl. <laughs> oh, no, right like a cowgirl. Huh? Money got it. You see when she scribbles somebody's name, like, I got your name. She's not really writing anything. She yes. Just like, <laughs> or like, what's the one? Oh, balloons. Pop, 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 yeah. pop. <laughs> Why do you think it's, it's taking off? Why do you think it went viral? I feel like there's a sexual undertone. That's why people like it. Think about it. She's slurping ice cream. She's like, riding like a cowgirl. Like, there's a sexual undertone to it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why people like her video specifically. 
Yeah. Because there are other people that do it and nobody really gives a fuck. But yeah. I think she went viral because, you know, she's cute and is kind of sexual in a way. And mm-hmm. I think it's a kink. Yeah, it's definitely a kink. And I remember um, the guy who gave her the car, the like $70 car that you oh, can buy. Oh, yeah. It. And she, it's like, oh, thank you, daddy. Thank you. Thank you. I'm like, the way she said, I'm like, this is what they're paying for. They yeah. want to hear her say something that inspires lust. And it's like. Yeah. Or like the slurping sounds. Like all of that. You know, if anybody going to pay, it's a nigga going to pay for it. Mm-hmm. It's, Any- like, it's like a strip club. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, all right, you can go in a strip club and throw your money at a girl. Or you can go online and throw your money at a girl and get the same satisfaction. It's like, yeah, without all right, leaving the comfort of your room. And no pressure for going to back for a dance and spend more money. <laughs> you, just, <laughs> you can just log off. Like, all right, I, I didn't gave her $50. I'm done. <laughs> Man, I, I mean, I salute anybody getting money or whatever, but it's just so funny that you can do something and it can just take off. Because NPC characters have been a thing for a while, mm-hmm. like in Asia and overseas, right? Yeah, I so, saw a video. I'm like, what? They've been doing this shit? And now the niggas have infiltrated. There you go. We make yes, it better. Black Power. There you go. Picky <laughs> Doll. She's the Rosa Parks of this shit. <laughs> She's like, I ain't moving to the back of the NBC bus. I'm here now. She's in the very fucking front, okay? Mm-hmm. So let's go ahead and move on to my next segment, Let Me Tell You Something. So we're going to start by playing a little icebreaker game called Fill in the Blank. Uh-oh. All right. So let's get started. 2023 has been blank. Hmm. 2023 has been... You got to be quick. It's rapid fire. Oh, no. what, what, is this 2023 or last year? <laughs> um, fast, because I don't even know what year I'm in. <laughs> All hoes do is blank. Cry and talk about their birthdays. Mm. McDonald's <laughs> is blank. Nasty. Uh, I like McDonald's. <laughs> Whenever I say that, people get upset. Um, niggas always blank. Talking about conspiracies. Mm. Let it go. Krishan and Blueface are blank. Annoying. Never blank on a first date. Fuck. Mm. I but, find but it. But not if you're a man, though, so it's kind of. Oh, like, my God. Don't come over here with the double standards. You know I'm not with none of that. Okay. I find it funny when blank. People fall. <laughs> I fall all the time. <laughs> I'm clumsy. Okay. Broke niggas are blank. A waste. I agree. Megan the Stallion is blank. Overrated. <gasps> no. Get out. Podcast <laughs> over. I will not tolerate any the stallion slander. Not nope. No, I will not tolerate any Megan the Stallion slander. I am a stan. So, you know, that's the end of today's show. Bye bye. <laughs> I like Megan, but like I don't like what she's been giving lately. It's like her music quality has gone down. When is the last time she released something? Like every week, she got a new. She has song, not released anything. A, a crunchy Cheeto this song. This whole year, that's not a um, real song. I'm a ride for mine. She hasn't released a song this whole year. Uh, so uh, let's not make any judgments until she actually releases a song. But I mean, I will say Tina Snow is her best body of work. And that was a mixtape like four years ago. But I always say this about artists is that when they're on the grind and they're on the come up, they be hungry. So they be really putting in work. Well, Nas is 100 years old and he's still grinding. She has no excuse not to be making quality music. I think her music will always be quality. And she got a lot to talk about. She does. I want her to get in Drake's ass, get in Tory's ass, get in... Nikki's ass. I want her to like no, speak some real, Nikki. like all this subliminal stuff. And I no, say some real shit. I want you to let the chopper spray Megan. Mm-hmm. You got you got some stories to tell. How they done did you dirty? I mean, I do want her to shit on everybody for sure, mm-hmm. but she's already doing that just from waking up and being a bad bitch. But I mean, yeah, I do want her to shit on all these niggas that tried her. You're right. So I'm looking forward to seeing what she drops. But I feel like her last album was a throwaway album because she was trying to get out of that contract. And that may be the, the reason. Because there are a lot of songs that I saw she was working on and different producers she was working with, and those songs never came out. Yeah. So I don't know if she's saving them or what, but I'm definitely looking forward to her making some new music because she was really, like, 
we me and her connected. We both Aquarius. I was I was a big uh, fan of hers. I mean, I still like her. I would listen to something she came out with, but I'm not a fan of like the. So last who's your two. favorite female rapper? Nicki Minaj, of course. Okay, she's the great. She's the goat. Yeah. I mean, in terms of like right now, right now, and lyrically, I think JT from the City Girls is like fucking. So her, JT, her, her pin game is. I hope she. No, you can tell she writes her own shit. You yeah, I mean? yeah, so for much. sure. But um. She can rap. It's like, I remember when the first hearing the City Girls, it's like, oh, what the hell is this, this garbage? I mean, it was fun. But then it's like, oh, oh, she got some lines in there. It's like, <laughs> even on the Act Bad song, it's like, she out rap fabulous. I'm like, okay, that's not a lot of people can say that outside of New York. I mean, you know she's the one that wanted to start the group because she was rapping anyway, you know? Mm -hmm. you Just like on what the show, rap shit, like, it's... A lot of it is kind of based on, like, they EPs on the show, so a lot of the stuff uh -huh. kind of based on their timeline. But, okay, let's get back to the game, because we just <laughs> went way off. Making okay. a stallion. So, yeah, I mean, that's my girl. Shout out to the stallion. Okay, so, ladies, if a man does blank run. Hit you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Shira Stevens, a.k.a. Miss Sprinkle Sprinkle, is blank. Funny. I love her. Her content gives me like good voice. laughs. Good laughs. If you could create a dating app, it would be called Blank, and it would match people based on blank. It would be called Thirst Trap, and it would match you on a series of questions and not how you look. Because mm. the ultimate thirst trap should be your personality, not your looks. Mm. And I think people on these apps, they swipe, swipe, swipe. Oh, she's cute. Oh, he looks so... No. You're not. You're missing out on so many people because you're just looking at the bullshit. But I think if you know, like, let's say 10 random questions that really dive deep that you've got to answer, and then you swipe, oh, this matches up what I think. I'll swipe on this person. Mm. That's how you get so to the So you real would shit. genuinely like have shit in common because with the person. When you first message somebody if after you match, it would force you to talk about the things you wrote on that questionnaire. Yeah. And so you automatically have conversation starters and icebreakers because now you have something to talk about instead of saying, Oh, you look cute. Or oh, I saw you like the hike. It's redundant shit that goes nowhere. I get so many messages about, oh, we messaged and thing and then the conversation dried up. Yeah, because both of y'all are boring as shit because you don't know each other. <laughs> Neither one of you are showing your personality in a fucking dating app yeah. message thing. Yeah, it's very shallow and surface level for sure. I think that's a good idea. Thirst trap. Go ahead, do that. You know it's a lot of money in apps. Mm -hmm. so. no, I'm talking, talking to Silicon Thirst Valley trap. right now. Elon. Might they need a new shit. dating app too because all I hear bitches complain about is how there ain't nobody on Hinge. That's no one. It's like they said the same thing about Bumble, same about Tinder, same about Tinge. The next thing, it'll be this one. They're like... Ain't nobody on that thirst trap app. Anybody <laughs> asks the same questions, the same. It's like people, the thing about dating is that people have a negative outlook from the get go. And if you think there's nobody on something or there's no one out there, there's ne never going to be anyone out there. Mm. All you're going to fucking keep manifesting is nothingness because you think there's nothingness. So if you want to fucking find somebody anywhere, change your fucking outlook in the first place mm. and then see what opportunities spring forth from not being so damn negative. You you said a word there. I low key feel like you answered one of my questions that I plan on asking you later oh. with that response. But okay, there's only a couple more for the game. All right. Cheaters are blank. Winners. <gasps> if you're not cheating, you're not winning. <laughs> <laughs> you're terrible. <laughs> Pussy is blank. Power. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Michelle Obama is blank. Barbie. Mm. That's what Barbie should be, Michelle Obama. Oh, it should. Does she have a Barbie? I think she does. If she doesn't, she should. Mattel makes a Barbie. You probably got a Barbie. You don't even know about it yet. You probably <laughs> make one as we speak. They used to call me a Bratz doll. I can see it. Yeah, because big lips, but mm. yeah. Okay, last question. If you could have any superpower, it would be blank. Oh. To be a telepath. Like Charles Xavier. I want to read everybody's mind. I want to hear the fucking crazy shit people are thinking. I used to say I wanted that superpower, but then I was like, I don't want to hear the crazy ass shit that be. I was like, imagine just knowing everything about people and how they feel about you. Like, I feel like that might could end up very badly. Like, like imagine it like you 
You think somebody fuck with you and they had it like this? That's good though. Ass it's good to know. Like, all right, well, I'm gonna be on an island by myself because all you people are fucking scum. <laughs> <laughs> it would be kind of sick. What I don't would be know. your superpower? I think that I want to be able to like move shit with my eyes. What's that called? Telekinesis. Yes, that's what I want to do. Like, just move shit. It would freak every fucking body out. I would love like, that. Give me my keys. I would cause chaos everywhere I went just oh, because I can like do Carrie. that. You ever seen movie yeah, Carrie? Yes, that movie scared me when I was a kid. They'll put you in a, a cage and lock you away because you'd be Carrie. But how would they catch me? Mm, they'll get somebody close to you because you, you can't read their mind, so you think anyone's your friend, unlike me. Mm, so I see the whatever. motherfuckers coming. They're like, oh, you're my best friend. They stab you in the back. They're not going to know it's me, though. Like, I, I'm going to be moving shit, and then they're going to be just looking crazy, wondering what the fuck going on. Like, Did you have a costume? I mean, if you're a superhero, you should have a costume. <laughs> He's like, I think that's Kim, but she got the brat doll lips. <laughs> <laughs> I know I would like have on something all black. I don't need no cape because I can't cry. Well, you're already cry. wearing it. Yeah. You got I your mean, costume yeah. on. I'm a superhero. I'm a blazer wearing superhero. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and get into our main topic of discussion. Oh. I mean, you're a dating expert, I would say a dating coach, like the guy that knows the things. And I want women to win. Like, I want my girls to get what they want, regardless of what it is, whether it's marriage, a non-committal situation, enjoying being single. I want to help women get into that winner's mindset. So I want to ask you a couple of questions about that. All right. Well, first and foremost, just in case anybody doesn't know anything about GL, he started this blog called Black Girls Are Easy, and I want to know what made you want to start Black Girls Are Easy. I just wanted a space where I could uh, not vent, but just like go through the stuff that my friends were going through and break down. Like, I like if my you look at my original like blog post, it was all about like personal stories. Like, this is what my homegirl did, and this is how it, what happened. Is like my running breakdown of like what started, how she fucked up, what she said to me about why she fucked up. And it was like a lot of insight came from like breaking down these stories. And then people wanted more. They was like, now you should talk about music. You know, just like you, I love music and stuff. I talk about music, TV stuff. But people really wanted to know more about like, oh, when you said she should have did this, that uh, like I had like the running comments section. All the comments mm. used to be like, but what, if, and like people, you know, throwing their own business. What if I did this or the guy didn't do this? I'm like, I'm not sitting in the comments answering all y'all damn questions. So I like, I would craft these things every, if you look at the first year of that uh, website, everything was in response to like someone's comment or an um, explanation of something else I saw. So it became like this need of like, all right, people want to know X, Y, and Z. I'm going to give it to them raw and unfiltered without, because I think a lot of the dating advice is basically like, think positive, you'll be okay. Um, you know what? You just got to work it out. It's a lot of bullshit like that your mother or like your best friend would tell you to try to cheer you up. It's not like, no, you're being preyed on and this is why you're being preyed on. If you want to stop being preyed on, that's what you need to do. Oh, why did you go over there so early and, and have sex with him just because he said he liked you? Do you really not? Are you that naive? I know you're not stupid. You're smart, but you're being naive because you think he's cute and you didn't want to lose him. So you gave up the pussy so fast. What's wrong with you? Stuff like that became like a running thing in all the uh, early ones. So it just expanded from there. Okay. Okay, that's fair. Why the name change from Black Girls Are Easy to Far From Basic? Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> he banned... Um, the Facebook page was like over 100,000 uh, people. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know, huge. Like every time I posted, a lot of people re react to it. I think... The site would crash because I had way too much traffic. And a lot of traffic back in the day was coming from Facebook. And suddenly, you know, PC culture became a thing. And I guess a couple people were like, that's, I don't like the name. Like, it would all, every day there would be a comment about the name. Mm. And most, and like, the comment, people in the comments would defend it. Like, oh, if you actually read it, you understand the name Black Girls Easy. You actually broke down why it's called that. And they didn't give a fuck. They just wanted to, you know, they wanted to carry it like, no, this isn't right. You shouldn't say this stuff. This is derogatory. So Facebook probably got way too many complaints and it's like traffic stall. Like I would post something where we like get 10,000 with um, likes and all these shares from the 100,000 people that found it became nothing it was like a dozen. And I'm like, what's going on? And Dang, they really 
fucking shadow banned you on your own shit. This is before shadow ban was even a thing with Instagram. <laughs> like they were doing this shit way before Instagram. Like Meta is a motherfucker. Mm. And I was like, shit. I was like, if I want to continue to promote the site and have it grow, I got to change the name. And so, like, that was a pain in the ass because you got to change everything. Mm, brand yeah. And it took me forever to come up with a new name. I was like, well, I can't. Clearly, I can't put black girls in the title. Plus, it was a good thing because a lot of my fan base now are like everything. It's like so many Asian women read mm. this website. And a lot of women from Australia, like, Australia is a, a big thing. And even um, Nigeria. Um, now, and I think outside of the UK, uh, it's probably the biggest place. So it's like a melting pot of all these people that read the site. And it's like, it wasn't just black women. And most of the advice I was given wasn't even the black women anymore. Maybe I just priced myself out too much. But it was like all these white girls coming to me with these these random dating topics that were like weren't about the black community anymore. And I'm like, well, I need to expand and talk more about this stuff because I, I know a lot of ain't shit white men too. So... <laughs> That's a thing. That's a real thing too. B- bitches be thinking white men any better. They nah. not. They all trash. <laughs> they are. They they sociopaths. Like it's it's crazy. Mm. Like I got some. The worst stories I've gotten is more about white men or Middle Eastern men more than black men. It's crazy. Tell Especially me a story money. like from a client or somebody where everything just went wrong. Where you had to just tell her, "Girl, you need to get the fuck on." Okay. Yeah. No. Tell this me a story. Is, this is a, I'm going I'm to change some names. So this girl from um, Indiana, mm-hmm. she was dating uh, the son of somebody very, very famous who everybody would know if you mention his name. And so he changed his name to kind of protect his thing. But she knew he had money, he had cars and all that stuff. What she didn't know is that like he didn't have a job. It was like all family money. He was still being mm-hmm. tight for money. So he, she basically lured him in and she thought like, oh, this is going to be the greatest relationship ever. He really likes me. And I'm and she comes to me advice because like she realized like they had sex, um, all the promises of like I'm gonna take you here and give you this and like I think she got like three thousand dollars and that was it. Mm. Like the money cut off, and so she's like, how do I get him back because I know he really likes me. I'm like, well, talk to your friends around town because Indiana is a small place. I was like, how many other people have dated him? I'm not gonna do that because anybody gonna know. I think. Like, she basically told me, like, I was wrong about him, mm-hmm. and she went off and did it on her own. I'm like, all right, it's your world. She comes to find out he was fucking everything in Indiana. Mm-hmm. It's like his MO was like, he take you out, wind down, he tell you what to do. He, he reveals, oh, I'm actually such and such his grandson. And that gets the panties even wetter. <laughs> and so what well, it shouldn't if you knew who it was. Like, yeah. But basically in the end, she got, she kept going back to him. No more dates no more money, and she just got exploited by this man for, like, months. And she finally came back to me. He's like, yeah, you're right. I should have checked on him. He wasn't really into me. But why?" then her thing was like, why do men do this when you just genuinely want a connection that telling you, you tell him you want a, something real because I went, went through so much hurt. Like, basically, she went through a lot of pain, and she confided in this man way too early. He's like, why would somebody who knows what you went through turn around and do the same thing that you've been through? I'm like, because he never gave a fuck about you. He saw you as an object. Because she, she had just got BBL surgery, I think, like the year before. So, like, new body, who this, but it's the same person. Just because you changed your body, just because you, you know, you look better in a swimsuit doesn't mean your mentality has changed. Ooh. You're the same woman that has always been exploited by men. And you think because you got this new body and this this millionaire, well, his granddaddy's a millionaire, but this fucking bum is chasing after you and selling you these stories and, here, take this, uh, take this money, I'll pay your, your car. And... It was all game. And if you would have checked around the city and didn't think you were special, you would realize, like, this is his M.O. He baits you in, takes you to his house. And after that first month, you're just going to be the girl that comes over at 1 o'clock in the morning and busts it open. Now you got to go. Mm. So that was the most recent thing of, like, something that could have saved her a lot of time and effort. And she could have probably even turned the tables on him a little bit because I did give her advice, like, well, if you want to kind of put the screws to him, do X, Y, and Z. And she did not want to risk it. That's the thing. A lot of women don't want to risk something that they see so much potential, in, especially when it comes to a rich man. Like his girls, I've known that have dated rappers, and they, they don't want to risk being different from the last girl because they're like, "Oh, if I do that though, he he won't want me anymore." It's like he don't yeah, want you. Yeah, they be from scared the, the to no. speak up. But to your point, like the woman you just talked about, you speak about vetting people a lot. If she would have vetted him, 
she wouldn't have ended up with those issues because she would have made sure or knew what she was getting into before she got all hung up on him as a person. Or don't lie to yourself. Yeah. The biggest thing is don't sit around and say, I don't care about money. I don't care who you are. I only care about how you're treating me. And then they treat you like shit. So clearly all you did with all you really did care about is status. Mm -hmm. You're with him because, oh, he could potentially do this for me. We become a power couple. We can have kids that become generational wealth. Like you cared more about that than how this man was treating you. And you lie to yourself. Like it's easy to say what you will and won't do when you're outside a relationship. Once you get inside a relationship, now it's the test. Mm. If somebody smack you in the fucking back of your head, are you going to walk away like you told those girls on the internet or are you going to fucking walk out the house? If somebody cheats on you, say, oh, I would never put up that. Are you going to stay or are you going to fucking run away? Most of the people do the opposite of what they say Most people outside are of relationships. Shit. Yeah. I would say people are not 100% anything except 100% full of shit. Mm -hmm. So, should women have sex on the first date? Does it kill the chances of a real commitment? That's a complicated one because. Logically, you shouldn't be having sex on the first date. I think I joked about a man, man shit, but like no one should be doing it because it's too early and it's like it creates a either it creates a quick bond or it creates like, oh, the lust is gone. I don't really want to get you to know you anymore. And the weird it's the thing about a lot of men and my friends. I never really thought like this. Even when I had sex with girls fast, I never really thought this way. But a lot of my friends is like she a hoe because she let me hit it quick. And I'm like, but it's like, how is she a hoe when she you just wanted to you. fuck her? You know what I'm saying? Like you, you're a part of this too. Yeah. You're I a hoe too. Yeah, like, I never understood that. I never understood that. If two people like each other, it, it doesn't make either one of them a bad person. But I think the problem is, is that we live in a society where a lot of people wear masks. So don't have sex quick because you don't know who this person is. Just like the last story is like, she went over there. Not only does she have sex, the worst thing than having sex is to be vulnerable with somebody you don't know and you don't trust, you shouldn't trust yet. You gave this person way too much ammo in terms of like mm -hmm. your personality and your trauma, and they used it to bait you in. And the sex is just the icing on top. Because a lot of the emails I get, and this is like TMI, but like they always talk about, I never came like this before, or he was fucking me like this. It's like they always lead with these crazy sex stories where it's like, was it the sex or was it the potential of who this person could? could be that you really open yourself up to have this great sex. Cause sometimes good sex requires like a mental connection. And I think that connection is false on the first date. Cause you don't really know this person. Yeah. The connection is shallow. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with like connection or emotional bond because you don't know this motherfucker at all. But then you have people like, Oh yeah, we had sex first date. And then shit, we got that married. makes me question. Is the sex really that good? Cause you don't know this nigga and shit. If he fucking everybody like that, well, goddamn you ain't special. Oh, this one girl, she's like, this dude was fucking me so good. She's like, Gio, I squirted it like, she said, I think 20 something times. Like something ridiculous where I like, I don't even believe it. But like, if she said it, <laughs> I guess it's true. And she's like, I came with that two nights later and the sheets were changed again. And then I found evidence of another one was over there. So I'm like, was he making her squirt too that he had to change the sheets what again? What the fuck do you think, girl? <laughs> I'm like, do you think you're the only one on the sheets? It's like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. How does a woman find a good trick? Like a woman that oh, wow. doesn't want a commitment. She just wants fun and money. She got See, I got y'all. I know some of y'all want to know about this. So she got fuck on the first date. No. Um, <laughs> I think it's about knowing the levels of wealth. Like I break it down in the book like this, like in whole text, I say a trick is somebody who will take you out to eat. Um, maybe give you small gifts. Like they're not going to sponsor you. Mm -hmm. So if you want, do you want a, a trick, a treat or a sponsor? Mm -hmm. Someone's going to treat you to a, a few nice things. Someone's going to trick on you, but like not really. Or you want somebody that's going to really give you fucking real money. Over. A motherfucking sponsor. Yeah. That's what the girls want. That's what want. they want. Like they say trick, but it's like, you don't really want to trick any, any dude can trick on you for a first yeah, date. Yeah. Like that could be a regular nigga that yeah. work at FedEx. All them niggas can trick. It's like, Men trick, trick, it's like, it ain't tricking if you got it. That's the way it goes. But if you want, like, a, a real sponsor, you got to, like, know where to find them. It's like, in every city, there's wealth. Where are the wealthy men at? They're not at your mall. <laughs> They're not at the fucking Chick-fil-A waiting in line. They're at the restaurants. They're at the sports bars, maybe. They're at the um, Ritz-Carlton lobby they're at all these places, and of course, they're going to always be on the apps because a lot of these older men 
are just trying to bait in the young women. So even like, oh, the apps are trash. It's like, if you read somebody's bio, a man with money is always going to lead with his wealth. I work for an investment bank. I've traveled to the, all these countries. And it could be cap, but, you know, it's up to you. Even if you meet a guy in the bar, it could be cap what he's talking about. Oh, yeah, I broke this deal and this and that. He could be lying his ass off mm-hmm. trying to get you up to his room. But you got to go in your city, know where the money is. The first thing I do is know where the money is. All right, you go into the club where all the broke niggas hang at. You don't want the dude with the fake watch. You don't want the dude with the fucking Ooh, child. the lease car. You want real wealth. And a lot of times it's going to be older men. Mm-hmm. And a lot of, especially my little um, homegirls from Instagram, they love the young swaggy guys because like they're my around my age and they have money. Yeah, because they play in the NBA. But every other girl is fucking on the same dudes that play in the NBA because it's a, it's only a certain number of men under 30 that are tall. Most of them are ugly, but some of them could be handsome <laughs> that have... Hey, bitches love ugly niggas. Well, and it's like, you're looking at a specific group of men. In your city, you're not going to find that, that same man unless he's a scammer, a drug a dealer. A scammer, yeah. And it's like, yeah, he has that because he's one bad deal away from going to jail. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> If you want real wealth, it's probably not going to be yeah, somebody in your age group. that's why I tell group. girls that want, you know, a sponsor, you got to go older because most young niggas don't have their life together. They still trying to figure it out. And if they do, they're scamming. Mm-hmm. Because, like, in a lot of big cities, niggas don't even have jobs or careers. Like, they just out here. And you wonder how they got a bag. It's because they're scamming or doing something that's not going nowhere. My favorite stories are the girls, like, especially the ones from Instagram that'll hit me up. And, you know, first we'll, we'll talk about whatever, and they have, like, a situation. And then they'll reveal their sugar daddies. And it's like, they don't show the picture, but, like, they tell me, he's 52, he does this, he has a wife, or he's a divorced man who does this. It's like, they're all older men. And, like, if you look at their pages, like, they're always on vacation, they're always on there. You never see the picture, no man. You're just like... Damn, she's selling a lot of hair. Or she's like, because they all got like little <laughs> fake businesses they put out on their pages. But like, when I talk to most of them, like, they have older men that are smart for these, know a these lot lifestyles. Of girls like that. Yeah. And like, they knew where to find the money. A lot of them say, oh, you helped me because, you know, before I read your book, I didn't have the confidence to go out, go out and like talk to guys like this. Or it's like, one girl told me specifics, like, you taught me that I got to put myself in a different type of room and not be afraid to make strong eye contact. And that has paid off <laughs> more than you would ever know. One girl even offered me money. She's like, I feel like I've made so much money because of you. And um, I would like to send you a, a check. Or a, I'm like, you brought the book. You don't have to give me any more money. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't, I'm not a pimp. You don't got to give me a cut of what you <laughs> Like you paid. You paid for the and book. It's you like, paid your It's fee. like, shorty, it's like, it's okay. It's like, but I'm happy. But that's good that, you know, bitches are getting some real results. I knew this girl. I'm not going to say she was a friend, but she was a friend of a friend. So she was around me sometimes, and she was one of those bitches that, you know, had a nice apartment, all the designer, everything. And I get to talking to her, I found out she gets 10 bands a month from this old-ass man in a wheelchair. And, I mean, I think she got to suck a little dick for it, but <laughs> she don't have to do shit. You know what's crazy? And this is this is um another wild story. This girl, and um, you know, from Baltimore, so she, like, this is how she, you know, they, they try to hold bait me and the DM, DM me back. A lot of times, like, don't DM me and go to the page you want to talk to me. Mm-hmm. But she she led with something like, oh, hey, G, I love your work. I was recently in Baltimore. I want to ask you a question. I'm like, all right, Baltimore question. What's going on? You know, she's pretty, too. So you're like, all right, let me see what she's talking about. And she had a sugar daddy that was like, really couldn't walk. He like, his dick didn't work. Mm-hmm. Like, the most she would do is like, let him like, her, fill, fill him up. Mm-hmm. And she's like, he gives me, it was a crazy amount of money a month. But she wasn't lying because, like, she was buying all this shit, like, property where she lived at. But her Baltimore question was, like, I recently traveled to Baltimore for um, some business thing. And I met a man, I think, at the airport from Baltimore. And I fell deep in love with him. Here's the thing. He has nothing. He's literally broke. I had to loan him money. Oh, child. That just She's like, upset what's me. wrong with me that I got this man giving me month, uh, money, all this money a month who I don't even really got to touch. And this man who I want who's not giving me the time of day and, and can't do shit for me. What's wrong with my brain? I'm like, you want love, not money. And you just found it out the hard way. Mm, yeah. And you have to be, like you said, you got to be real honest with yourself. Like, and that's okay. Some women want love and some women want security. Pick your poison. I mean, the win-win situation is you can get both. 
but you just have to know what's more important to you. And that also leads me to another question. So on the other end, we talked about tricks. What about women that want to date for marriage, but they don't want to have to fuck a bunch of frogs to get there? Vetting, I think it's important. Like, all right, dating shouldn't be an exercise in like fertility. It's like, all right, I'm going to go on this date. I got to go on this date. I got to go on this date. Fuck that. Take your time. Understand, like, I'm doing this for the long run. This is a fucking marathon, not a sprint. So when you talk about kissing frogs, it's like, you don't got to kiss the frogs, but you're going to have to fucking entertain a lot of them. <laughs> and you got to be willing to put in that work. It's like any athlete, like, all right, how do I get a, a good, a better uh, jump shot? You be in that fucking gym 24-7. You got to practice. With dating, you got to practice till so you get so good at So how would you practice it. vetting somebody? Because I know women always want to know, what am I supposed to say? What do I have to say? Like, You got to get good at questions. Like, Not like a job interview question where like everything's like this, this, because, you know, people lie. You got to get good at reading people because in your life, you probably went on a lot of dates. Ooh, you sat across from a lot of people. I used to go on three dates a day. See? <laughs> I used to think it was so fun. And if, if you're doing it the right way, the moment, like within 15 minutes, you already know. Yeah. This person's full of shit. This person's very nervous or this person's hiding something like you get to know the signs of people if you know how to read them. And sometimes like people could their energy be going off and you could be wrong about. It, and that's why you may give them a second date. But I think dating is like, all right, if you don't want to go through date after day after date, get good at it so that you do these pre dates. And in my book, Date Like a Spartan, the thing that I wish more people would utilize is the pre date phone call, because what happens now is like you get somebody, you meet them on the Internet or the date net or whatever. You text them. Oh, what's going on? Da, 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 da. You text for like a day or two. Then you may go out at the end of the week or next week, but it's primarily just texting somebody. You can't learn shit from texting. Yeah. If you call somebody, all right, I'm, I don't like to text. Call me tonight after you get off work or when I'm off work and let's talk. In that phone call, in 30 minutes, you can weed out somebody the same way you can weed out a date. All right, instead of wasting my Friday night going out with this fucking loser, I just talked to him for 30 minutes. I know he's full of shit. I heard, <laughs> I heard the crying kid in the background. Mm -hmm. I heard him keep clicking over the phone. That means he got all these hoes blowing him up. He, he's kind of messy already. I'm not going out with him. Oh, when I can't see you, I'll let you know. Blocked. Gone. That's the Whereas, way you move. If you don't do that, it's going to take you maybe two weeks to fucking figure out he ain't shit. Yeah. So predating is better than just going on all these dates because you can predate the frog. Not have to kiss him. Not even have to see him in public and weed him out. You hear that, ladies? Pre-date, okay? I mean, with, but I don't like to talk with, on the phone. Oh, I'm so nervous. Right? Shut it's like, girl, up. if you don't get on that phone and investigate this nigga, how soon do you think, like, with the apps? Because I feel like most people are dating off the internet now. How soon do you think you should meet? Because I feel like another issue that comes up is that when you wait too long and you have all these conversations, and you feel like you know this person, and it's like you have not met this person in real life, so you do not know this person. So how long do you think is a good amount of time to actually meet up with somebody? Within the first week, you got to always say set a date within that first week of like either taking off the app, getting to meet them. Like it could be the next day. I don't care. It's like I always get this because women always they see the rules and they like, but what if this happened? It's like I don't care if it's the next day or that next week, like seven days later, but you should do it within that week because you don't want to get into the whole catfish situation where like yeah that's their that's how they look but that's not really their personality they're basically giving you that fake shit on the messaging uh so call them when are we going out when you're free oh i work i'm busy they don't want if they don't want to make time especially a, a man who like has lust in his eyes towards you he's going to make fucking time that first week to see you after he fucks you he may get busy but like, <laughs> when he when he wants you he's going to fucking make time to see you so Definitely within that first week, if like it's dragging on, you basically let somebody just brainwash you into thinking they're the best things since sliced bread. Mm. And then, you know, it's a lot of dates that happen. Like, oh, we just text for like a week. I felt like I knew him forever. Of course. Or you're getting these five hour phone calls. Oh, we talked while Bitches he was at work. Bitches fall in love off a of text message. We, slept, Lord, have we fell asleep on FaceTime together. It's like you fall asleep FaceTime ass, bitch. <laughs> Stop it. I have heard 
heard this story so many times. It's like, girl, you don't know that nigga. Relax. But it's romantic. It's like, oh, he was there all night just watching me sleep. It's like, it's not romantic. He's just trying to get in your panties. So he's doing what he got to do that first month or so to get what he got to get. Mm. See, I feel like if I ever go back to day niggas, I'm a dog them bad. Cause I just got all this knowledge and all. I mean, I was dogging them then, but now the woman I am today, niggas would get dogged and all my bills would be paid and I wouldn't even have to pop no pussy. You know what would happen to you if you went back to date? And I think your wisdom and your energy, you would find yourself married, not dogging anybody. Cause you're running <laughs> to somebody to be like, so like impressed. Cause the thing about, you know, I've known a lot of people especially out here in LA, like that are actors, right? Well, people behind the scenes, people that like just fuck a bunch of models, this and that. And they meet that one girl. She don't got to be in the industry or anything, but like she's different. She moves different and they fall in love. Like I've taught people off the cliff about, it's like, dude, you were fucking such and such and now you're in love with, with this random girl. Like she's just different. And it's true. It's like, if you see somebody that moves different and has a different mindset, as a man, you want to fucking chase it and cage it and fucking marry it because you don't want it mm. to get out. And so I think if you were to have known how you are, for real, for real, I think a man would like be enamored with you. Like, yeah, mm. you can cut that mindset. Like, fuck, you know, I don't care. Like, I'm going to fucking lock her in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> get her babies. I don't, think it, I don't think it would be that easy, though, because like I get a high off of like ruining lives mm -hmm. like it's fun for me so <laughs> see i'm toxic mm -hmm. anywho so enough they like about the, they, me they like the uh the chase uh toxic chocolate yeah a little toxic a little toxic caramel mm -hmm. drake chocolate. would like you yeah. i think drake would like drake you. is a terrible person anywho um <laughs> <laughs> let me not even go in on how my feelings on aubrey um i feel like i have other questions but i feel like they low-key have been answered oh i have a good one Okay, so it seems like a lot of women are kind of moving towards anti-marriage thoughts. like, And I feel like it's because so many people make it seem like it's so hard and it's so terrible. Even Michelle Obama, a woman that I love and respect, and, you know, she's the one and not the two. Like, don't play with her. But she said she hated Barack for 10 years. And do you think that's just a part of marriage or do you think that that's unhealthy? I think it's unhealthy, first of all. It's like, if you, why do people want to get married? Because they want companionship, they want love, but like, it's hard to attain because people change, people evolve. And with, you know, in Michelle's book, it's like, she didn't want to date Barack from the jump. She didn't like his, his personality's attitude, but like, like I was talking about you, like, men see a certain woman and they like, I'm going to chase and chase and chase. I don't give a fuck what I got to do to lock her down because I know she's special. And that's what he did. It was, it wasn't her falling in love with him. It was him fucking steamrolling to try to get her like, to fall I for gotta her. I got to have her. And then once he got her, of course, like his career became more important than any mm -hmm. being a husband. I think that's what she resented was that like mm -hmm. he wasn't even home for the damn um, the first daughter. It's like he's out on the train or he's playing basketball. It's like Barack was doing a lot of shit that was like, no, bro. I don't know if this is the type of man you want to be married to. But she stuck with it because he had yeah. aspirations that you know, were more important, I think, than her own uh, love for wanting a real husband. Mm -hmm. But I think in general, I think um, when women say like, oh, one girl, she tweeted me this. It was like a response to something about marriage, I said. And uh, she's like, we don't want to be married anymore. We just want to be successful and self-aware and, and just love ourselves. I'm like, I'm sure that's true to an extent. But when it comes to like, you meet a guy who does stuff to you and has potential like to be a good father, those thoughts of marriage is going to come back. You're going to want to, you're going to revert to the same thing you were when you're young playing with Barbie dolls. You want to have that picket fence. Oh, it'd be great to be married. Cause no one wants to sit around and be Goldie Hawn is like, Oh, we're together, but we're not married. Cause that feels weird. So I think like the alternative is what just, I less. guess just being single and living the soft life. Tracy Ellis Ross, if you will. Uh, just live the fucking villain life. If you're going to be single, you might as well have multiple boyfriends. You should boyfriends. ruin yeah, lives. That's fucking, what I'm talking about. Fucking soft girl <laughs> era needs to, to stop because it's a lot of bullshit being You sweet. hate the soft girl era? I like the soft girl. I think like being soft and feminine and pretty and smelling good. Like all that stuff is, is be a Barbie doll. That's, that's all good. But I think mentally you can't be soft. 
You can't yeah. ever be soft yeah. in this world. Because that's another question I have. How do women protect themselves from people trying to play with them? But I feel like you kind of already answered that when you said you got to speak up, you got to vet them, you got to like... Well, in your last episode, you talked about boundaries. And I think yeah. you you broke it down as like, the things you don't want to do, you have to speak up and say, no, I don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. And I think going even further is like, ask yourself why you don't want to do something. Like if someone say, oh, Kimber, let's go out to the club uh, on Tuesday night. And you're like, you get that dread in your stomach, that feel like the anxiety, like, I don't want to tell them no, but I really mm-hmm. don't want to go. Then it's like, to understand yourself more, why don't I want to go somewhere? Because... We're going to a place where it's going to be people I don't want to interact with. It's going to be attention I don't want to have in my atmosphere. I would rather not do that. I don't mind going out on a Tuesday. I don't want to go to that environment. So that's you understanding yourself. So when you talk about knowing boundaries and knowing, you know, how to keep yourself safe, it's like, why would I tell this person this, this information about myself? Or why would I go along with this date idea when I don't feel comfortable with it? Understand why you're not, you're not saying no just to say no to be mean. You're saying it for a real reason that probably goes back to something that happened to you as a child, your trauma or how somebody once played you. It's not being overly defensive. It's just understanding your triggers and knowing like, all right, in order to protect myself, I got to understand when somebody's triggering me and why and how to don't avoid it by being passive. It's like, oh, I got so busy. I'm sorry. I couldn't call you back. Like that's not healthy either because people like, oh, now she's flaking. You got to say, look, I don't mind going out or I don't mind going on this date with you, but not here or not this week, or I'm going to do something. Like, you got to know how to set your boundaries. If somebody's being yeah. a piece of shit, like, hey, the way you talked to me the last time we went out on a date, I didn't like it. Or the way you talked to that waitress, it gave me these bad vibes of how you talk to women, so I don't want to go out with you anymore. Oh, you know, I was just joking. I understand that, but that's not for me. And that's like protecting yourself from people who are giving you weird energy. Just call it out. Understand what you're calling out, and then call it out. Mm, addressing it. I like that. Because I know a lot of girls that are afraid to speak up or call men out or even ask questions. And I I really hate that because and it's based off of fear, like they don't want to lose out on this person or the opportunity to possibly have something. But at the end of the day, if you don't call shit out, it only hurts you like you're holding all that shit in when you know somebody crosses your boundary and you don't speak up or address it. So boundaries, boundaries are important. Okay, so three more questions. Okay, so we both know that self-confidence plays a big part in finding the right partner or dating. What do you think are some practical ways that women can boost their self-esteem in this dating shit? Oh, I just wrote about this. Uh, did I write about it? No, I had a podcast about this uh, last week. Bully yourself. Mm, elaborate. So I once heard this line from Eminem from one of his random songs where he's like, how he's always afraid to do what, you know, he's Eminem, he shouldn't be afraid of shit, but he's Mm -hmm. like, anytime I don't want to do something, like anytime I get in my own head, I push myself, say, Marshall, you're going to fucking do this shit. And I do it. (laughs) And I'm like, I think a lot of people do that naturally without even calling it bully themselves. It's like, you call it psyching yourself up. Any businessman or any like Wolf of Wall Street type people, like they tell you, you got to fucking psych yourself up because you're always in this duality state of like, I'm afraid, but I got to do it. So how do you quiet that one voice and and make the strong you stand out? You got to fucking psych yourself out. And I call it bullying yourself. And I think for anybody, when you feel, you know what, I don't have confidence. My self-esteem is low because X, Y, and Z. You got to talk to yourself because you can't run to a book and reread a chapter every time you feel low. Because what happens when you're out in person and you got to speak up for yourself? You're going to stay quiet like a mouse. You got to be able to do what you're on here. Like, you know what? Fuck it. I got to do it. Stop being weak. Stop being a pussy. You can do this. It's like, you got to talk to yourself. We always are talking to ourselves in our own head. Yeah. But how much is, of that is like, I don't know. No. It's like you're weighing all these statistics about how it's going to go wrong or what can go wrong instead of saying, Fuck it. I got this. Let's do this. I'm so, just going to do it. So bully yourself. Push yourself. So if you if you were somebody that was trying to bully themselves, what would be the conversation in your head? All right. Let's say I'm I'm trying to start a podcast mm-hmm. and I'm nervous. Like no one's going to listen to it. They don't want to hear what the fuck I got to say. Thoughts it's, that I it's, have it's, had. There's so many people <laughs> that got podcasts and there's no money. It's like shut the fuck up. 
you got something to say, they want to listen to you. Like, I don't care what nobody else say, you're going to do it. You're going to do it, you're not going to stop doing it. You're going to wake up and fucking do it. And if, you know, you find yourself drifting like, no, I don't really want to do this. Shut the you fuck up. You're going, you're going to do it. Yeah, you got to <laughs> tell yourself. It's like, it depends on your own, what you need. Because some people respond to like positive, like, mm -hmm. you know what? No, I need this. to kick my own you, ass. You kick, sometimes you need to, like, I'm the type of person where like, I need to yell at myself. Yeah. Just do it. Stop fucking around. Do it. You're going to do it right now. And that's how you do it. It's like, it takes practice to get in the habit of like going from like chaotic thoughts to like specific, you're going to do this type of thoughts. And I had a friend who used to talk to himself out loud and he like, he would do it, but he would do it like, so everyone could hear him. And I'm mm. like, well, I guess it was just me. It wasn't like a room That's a people. whole nother level. I'm like, I'm like, bro, I was like, you psyching yourself up in front of me. He's like, no, you just got to something. Like, I think we were in the gym or something. And he's like, no, you just got to fucking... No, I'm like, I get it, but like, <laughs> that shit inside. <laughs> I'm like, is everything okay? I want to hear your, your thought process. <laughs> is everything okay over there? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. He was, he was crazy, literally. <laughs> that's actually really good advice. I love that. So, and I'm just, that's going to be something I keep for myself too. It's time to get on your bully. Mm -hmm. Time to bully these motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how can women handle rejection or disappointment? With grace. Well, I think first off, like give in to your disappointment. It's like don't try to be fake, positive, and spin your disappointment. Because when you try to mask that you're upset or let down, all you do is create a hole where like all those feelings go there. Then they're not going to die. It's going to fester. And next time you get disappointed, it's going to grow, grow, grow until you become a miserable motherfucker who's like nothing ever works for me because you let that shit slide mm -hmm. instead of creating that chasm of like false feelings all right i didn't get that job you know what instead of making some conspiracy or it could be a real excuse or like oh they didn't want me because i was black or they didn't want me because i was a woman it's like all right except like they didn't want you whatever reason was they didn't want me for that job but you know what tomorrow's another day i'm gonna go out and do it again and i'm gonna do it again and i'm gonna do it again look at any success story failure leads to innovation that leads to more success. So anything that happens in your life, I don't think anything's coincidence. I think it's all teachable moments. Mm. I think everything you can learn from. If your house burns down, fuck, I lost everything. Oh, you just got an insurance um, check. Well, should I go buy the same type of house or should I just get something smaller and put this money towards something I wanted to do? Boom, now you created a business or something like yeah. that. Stuff like that always happens. If you look, read any autobiography of anybody that's been successful, I wish I could think of something off the top of my head, um, a story like this, but like, it's so many where it's like, oh, this happened to me, and I pivoted this way, and now look what happened. Or this happened, my husband left me with the kids, I had to figure out another way, I invented the fucking super mop. It's like shit like that <laughs> happened. It's like, damn, that's how that mop came to be? Your fucking husband left you? It's shit like that, like rejection... It's just motivation. Mm, I love it. Great perspective. Okay. I wanted to close the question section with you giving us some stories of success from like women that you've helped, like women that actually found love or got what they wanted. Like I wanted to give the girls some inspiration. What's my favorite success story? Oh, one of my favorite ones is, this young lady who hit me up for like, I think she did like three different question sessions with me. And it was like the same thing. I can't find a man. No one wants me, this and that. And I told her it was her mindset. She's too negative. Like she's a pretty, you know, ones who are very pretty always make a point to send you a picture. So, you know, she didn't, she had confidence. She was trying to, she was down on herself. So I'm like, you need to disconnect from the cycle of the bullshit you're on because you keep talking about the same. And I hate when they always talk about the same guy and the same story. It's like a month later, I say, walk away from him. You come back, well, I talked to him again. Walk away from him, disconnect. Disconnect from your fucking raggedy ass friends because it's always a bunch of shit. And so she finally did that. I think she went on a trip to Dubai or somewhere um, just by herself. End up meeting some random older guy. He hit over heels with her. Wanted to give it a whirl. And, you know, she's telling me about it because she's, like, hesitant. Mm -hmm. I don't trust him. Uh, this and that, he's older than me. He's just out there to fuck with me. I haven't had sex with him yet, though. And I'm like, let that negative go. See what he's, receive what he's trying to give you. 
you're smart enough and you're wise enough at this point to know when somebody's trying to just use you. And she finally let go. Next thing you know, I didn't hear anything from her. Mm. Then she pops up engaged, <laughs> sending oh, me a picture wow. with the old man. Like, oh, <laughs> wow. Good for you. So it worked out. And then out. she had this fucking platinum wedding, like fucking money, money wedding. I'm like, oh. holy shit, you, he, you weren't lying about his net worth. And so I was like, it, it went for me, it wasn't the fact that she married ultra wealthy. It was the fact that she faced her fears and let go of that safety net boyfriend she had. Mm-hmm. And she let go of that safety net friend group that she had that was actually very toxic to her mm-hmm. mental health because they're telling you the wrong shit. Stay with him. Stay with him. He's so nice. He's so cute. Like, you don't, if you're telling somebody you're, somebody's a, mentally, a, verbally abusing you and, and you want to get out and they're telling you to stay because he's such a good catch, they're not the friends to have with you. So I was proud that she walked away, went to a whole nother country, mm-hmm. not to find a man. That's the thing. Like, when you're not looking for somebody, they'll find you. Just the reconnect with who she was yeah and somebody just saw to do her they didn't see her as a wounded bird they saw her as uh, somebody who was coming out of cocoon and he yeah he, he received that so that's a good story i mean there's so many things i'll get where like um i'll forget because i've been doing it for so long and i'll get a random person like oh by the way here's pictures for my wedding or here's my baby or this and that and it's like oh you actually listen <laughs> <laughs> so it ended up working I get out so, i get so in my own head sometimes i forget that like i get I'm mean to the people who aren't listening. I call them basic goods and I get like, because I'm upset. You're not fucking listening to them. <laughs> wasting my breath. Then you get the ones that actually listen and like, even the ones that like aren't married or something, they'll hit me up on Instagram like, oh, you helped me so much my self-esteem and this. And like, I found your book when I was in, in high school and you made me into the woman I am now. And then like, lady, you're only 24. But like, I appreciate it because like, you are listening. It did work. It is affecting mm-hmm. you in a positive way. So like, I got to remind myself like, oh, yeah, it, it does work. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I mean, I can give my own testimony. You know, we it. met because you came and spoke at my college and my friend actually sent me an article and it was called Bitch, Get Over Yourself. And the article dragged me for filth. And after I read the article, I'm like, you know what? I really be fucking tripping about Shit don't even fucking matter. And after I read that article, the words, bitch, get over yourself. Every time I was like stuck on someone or a situation or just felt like, oh, everybody's out to get me. I was like, bitch, get over yourself Mm -hmm. because it's not even that deep. It's not even that serious. So my personal testimony with your content is that you really like dragged me for filth in the best way, in the most loving way. But... You made me want to take a look at my thoughts and my actions and like what I was doing wrong and just to choose myself. Because a lot of the times, like when we get upset about these situations or obsessing over people, it's because we're not choosing ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's because we put them on a higher pedestal than us and we forget that. It's about us. It's about us being happy and what we want. It's not about, oh, I need this person. I need this person. No, you don't. You need yourself. All right. So maybe you're my favorite story now. I change it. Fuck right. Misty, it all started at Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern. <laughs> Southern I State. I had to learn that the hard way. Kept yelling at oh, me. yeah. They got, got, you, got you drunk. Okay. So that closes up. Let me tell you something. And the last segment is Kimspiration. Oh, that's my favorite part of the this show. This is when I leave you with a thought or a quote or something to take with you. And, you know, since you're the guest, do you have any Kimspiration you want to provide? Let me think. Come on, give me something. What was your last conspiration last week? It was it was about boundaries too. Right? It was like lead niggas where they had you fucked up at. Oh yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'm gonna give a conspiration. Oh, oh, look at it directing me. I I'm gonna get my doctor fill on. Remember what uh, Jerry Springer used to look in the camera. <laughs> The thing I've learned from Kimber Shan is to be unapologetically you. And this is a woman who started a podcast with a bunch of friends. Didn't quite work out. And she's like, you know what? I'm going to start off with another friend. Didn't quite work out. She moved to LA, started off with another friend. Didn't work out. And I said, Kim, don't call her Kim, huh? Kimber. <laughs> 
why are you trying to connect your energy to other people's energy when you shine brighter than all that shit? And she's like, in her British accent, well, mate, you make a good point. <laughs> and so I think the inspiration should be from what Kimber's doing right now is that don't wait on other people to make moves. You are enough to do whatever you want to do. They always say mastermind, team up with people. That's fine and dandy. But a lot of times those first steps require you to walk alone. And then other people who can complement those steps will come. But don't wait on other people to make moves. Sometimes all you need is yourself, a camera, and a motherfucking foul mouth. <laughs> like Kimber Shan. Wow, that was great. Mm-hmm. You doing my shit better than me. I got, Goddamn. I got, I got a neck for this. Well, that <laughs> wraps up this episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. GL, where can they find you? They can find me in the streets. In the homeless <laughs> encampment by Fairfax. No. Uh, <laughs> you can find me at farfrombasic.com. You can find me at, yeah, just farfrombasic.com. That's the only thing I got. Uh, Twitter at 8 plus 9. I think that's it. Okay. But yeah, if you want to hear my podcast, farfrombasic.com. I've got the links to all my books and all that stuff and the way you can connect with me. So holla at your boy. Okay, and don't forget to follow at a quickie pod everywhere, YouTube, TikTok. Threads. No, oh, I don't have a thread yet, but I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Yeah. Instagram, follow me at the Kimber Shan Show. And remember my three principles, love yourself, respect yourself, and accept yourself. 